Aloha, everybody, and welcome back to Brother Owl's Garden. I am so thrilled, delighted, pleased, even tickled to welcome back a very dear sister, a, a wonderful soul friend of mine, coming all the way from the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And please give a warm welcome to my beloved guest, Kahu Lahela. Welcome back, Kahu. Oh, it's such a pleasure to be back here. Mahalo for the invitation. That's so gracious of you. I really enjoy our conversation the, the last time. So I'm looking forward to having this really in-depth conversation with you today. Mahalo yeah, you way. know it. Uh, I've been champing at the bit to uh, have you back on. You're, you're not the easiest person to get back, but <laughs> you are a wonderful delight to have back. And so um, that's what it's about. Now, Kahu, what have you come to share with us today? I know it's going to be good. Yes, I, I remember the last time we spoke, we did touch upon Ho'oponopono. And so I think it'd be really great uh, because it is part of my mission in sharing this with 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 many, as many as 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 we can reach, uh, is, is to share the traditional version of Ho'oponopono uh, with your audience today. So, and, 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 and so I'm just going to give a little bit of background, if I may, mm. not Me my too. personal background, but, um, so, you, you know, uh, we Hawaiians, we lost, there was a, a period of separation from our traditional practices and our culture and our language for a period of time. And this was during my grandparents and parents and my generation. Uh, separation, we were not, um, when, when colonialism occurred here, we were not allowed to speak the Hawaiian language. Uh, we were not allowed to, uh, we, we had to change our attire to mi more missionary style attire. Uh, the, the, just everything changed. And so th there went a lot of the cultural practices. And thank goodness for a historian by the name, a Hawaiian historian by the name of Mary Kavena Pukui. Uh, she, uh, we have the uh, Bishop Museum, which is here in Honolulu. And the Bishop Museum is the repositor repository of our ancient Hawaiian artifacts and uh, um, recordings and um, our, our ancient practices of oli, of hula, and uh, of chant. And so Mary Kavena Pukui, uh, single-handedly, she translated a lot of the ancient uh, oral traditions and, and into the written word for us. So we had it in both Hawaiian as well as in English, the translation. So fast forward, um, the, the, ho, the Ho'oponopono practice, uh, the, the, the traditional practice that I'm sharing with you today was translated by Mary Kavena Pukui. So we're taking it from the old text and we're bringing it into the, the present day um, now as a Hawaiian, as a child, I was, we were always familiar with Ho'oponopono. We, Ho'oponopono was always talked about, like you do Ho'oponopono, you, you, you cleanse through Ho'oponopono, through forgiveness. And, and, and so that was always something, it was always a practice, but, um, but then more recently within the past, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 years, I don't even know how long now, uh, there have been, there's been more of a, um, a contemporary version that is, has gone rampant around the, around the world. And so, and, and that's through a book uh, which which I enjoyed reading it is Zero Limits by uh, Joe Vitale and Dr. Hugh Len, Dr. E. Haleakala Hugh Len. In that book, there's the practice which everyone knows now as Ho'oponopono, and it is the four statements. 
I'm right. sorry, please forgive me, thank you, and I love you, okay? But people think that that is the original version, and it's not, or the original meaning or practice, but it isn't. It's a That's a contemporary practice. And so my reason for sharing with you today is to teach the ancient practice so that people understand what Ho'oponopono really is. And it, so first we're going to uh, dissect the word, okay? So we're going to start with pono, the word pono. Pono in Hawaiian is a very powerful word. It's a very deep, simple, yet deep and profound word because pono is an act it's a state of being, and it's a daily practice. So it encompasses a lot in a, such a tiny word. It is a principle, a way of life. It's a higher standard of living in accordance with the, the laws of nature. Mm -hmm. So to be pono is to do the right thing. So pono means right correct, in harmony, in balance, um, well, you know, wellness, uh, it means, and, and when, when you, when it's a verb, then you are, you are doing, you are doing right, the, you're doing the right things, you're, you're doing the right things, not just for yourself, but also for the greater good. And so that's just the word pono. Now, when you put pono pono together, now pono pono is, is it's whenever you double the word, it, it emphasizes it. It, it makes it that much more um, like emphatic. Mm -hmm. Um, so you're tending to the process of pono. So that's pono pono. And when you add ho'o, ho'o you can place in front of any verb because ho'o is the action that puts pono pono in, into action. So it's the cause that creates the effect. So, so ho'o is to cause, to bring about, to make happen. So when you have ho'oponopono, it's actually alive and living and breathing. It, it, is, a, it is a movement of energy that never ceases. And so... It, it's an intention that when focused upon in daily practice, you cleanse, you clear, and you make pono the energy that's flowing between you and I and others. And this energy is like butterfly wings that, that, that go out around the world and 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 turn into um strong gusts <laughs> in other parts of the world so so it's it's alive i always say it's alive and it's and it's living and it and it's and and we can be a part of this energy as long as we focus focus our attention there so getting back to the traditional practice and and feel free to interject at any time and ask questions i know because i can sometimes just kind of get on a roll <laughs> well that that's okay and i'm i'm getting better and better at never interrupting my guests even when i need to because i got a couple of crusty comments about that in the past and it sometimes is very difficult but you are here as my honored guest and you are the fountain of knowledge 
and wisdom that you are sharing. And it is better that I just kick back and let you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so, so the original practice is because family live together and in an ahupua'a, an ahupua'a is, is, is a valley. And within the ahupua'a, so there's, there's a valley wall here and a valley wall here and everything within within this these two valley walls is what makes the ahupua'a from the mountain to the sea and so everyone had a role within had a kuleana a role yeah. a responsibility within that ahupua'a and so you could be a canoe builder you could be the fisherman you could be the farmer you could be the the kapa clothes uh maker you could be um um you know, just a variety of, of, of kuleana. And so there always had to be harmony, you know, balance um, within the system. And so Ho'oponopono, whenever there was anyone who was sick in a family or there was a disagreement or misunderstanding, then the family would come together and everyone in the family would have to sit around and sit together and discuss the issue, discuss the problem, because Ho'oponopono is to make things right. It's to bring about wellness. It's to correct the wrong. It's to um, restore uh, to harmony and balance. And so you, whenever there was any kind of pilikia trouble, uh, the family would pull together and, and, and ask that Ho'oponopono be done for the family because maybe someone was sick and there's there's a, and and it's believed that when someone is sick that means that there is an imbalance somewhere within the family within within the family structure there's an imbalance somewhere so so they would uh call to uh a senior member in the family to to conduct the ho'oponopono and if there, if that didn't work, then they would call a haku, a facilitator from outside of the family, to come in, and that's when the, usually when the problem was bigger, was 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 harder to solve, and so um, and so the family. I'm gonna um, just do something here to get rid of that sound. <laughs> uh, so the family. Um, would then begin uh, the 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 haku or the the um, the elder would begin with prayer and prayer or pule was always is is a huge part of the process. You begin with pule. Sometimes you pule in in the middle and or in, in, at varying steps along the way, and then of course you pule. You pray at the end. Always prayer, 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 and. Oftentimes you're praying to the family God. You're praying to that that family's um, aumakua, mm -hmm. and 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 to ask for enlightenment. To ask and and so now everyone in the family had to agree to be present, had to um, endure the process. It may take an hour or so it may take several hours it may take days it may take take weeks you know and so ho'oponopono you you go until it is done and mm. you have to you have to stay together as a family so 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 pule is the first step um and within that there's the kukulu kumuhana and the kukulu kumuhana is part of the pule, uh, which is identifying the problem. You're going to identify the problem and you're going to pull together the energy, the manna, um, the intention to, to build the energy toward a positive outcome. So, so it's a, so the kukulu, 
Kumuhana is a um, is a very clear uh, statement of the problem, and that that's part of the prayer. And then, and then the the, the next uh, phase is the period of of discussion. And the this is this is a multi process, multi step process of ident of 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 understanding what the problem is and having deep discussion. And so it is the period of discussion where the the haku or the facilitator speaks to each member of the family to get to gather their interpretation or their perspective of the problem. And so this facilitator had a huge role in listening to each person's story. And, and one time, and you, you're not, you cannot be interrupted. One at a time, each each family member would, would share. And so, and, and this this is so that there can be clarity on the whole situation from all sides of the situation. And then there there comes the discussions of like who um you, you know the, the, all of the 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 negative emotions and and the all the this is where all of the words come out from the family this is where everyone discusses uh the the pilikia the 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 problem and and what happened and who did what to whom and and blah 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 and so all of this has to come out with with truth with honesty but mm -hmm. with that comes the um the 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 heavy emotions that 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 are also being uh, that that have to come out they yeah. they they yeah. cannot stay within yeah Kahu, that reminds me, uh, for those who will understand the reference on Seinfeld, uh, Mr. Costanza's holiday called Festivus, the airing of grievances. I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> that's where that's where the wounds have to be brought up into the light, yes. essentially. But I had yes. that funny thought when you told me that. I want to share that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't that's, see that's that hysteria. episode. It's yeah. necessary. It's purging. It's, you know, if you're not willing to face, let's just call it the wounds. Okay. The wounding. If you're not willing to face that, what, you know, how, how is any uh, healing and release going to happen? You know, so you have to do that it has to come out up to right. the top. Otherwise it just perpetuates and, and manifests in so many other ways until it's released, resolved. Yes. And, and it can build up and get, the problem can become even worse. Right, um, right. Yeah. So, um, so then, part of that discussion period is also where there, there's the understanding of who uh, of the in of the bind between the injurer and the injured, and there's that discovery. So that that's called hala. So each of these um, sections, so to speak, or have have a a a, a name, um, and 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 it's and, and so these this is the process that one goes through. And so there's the discovery of the hala, the transgression. Um, there is the the period of silence, that which is ho'omalu, because when there's anger and there's conflict and then people need to take time to self-reflect and so there's that period of silence for the family members to 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 have their own time in reflection and to calm themselves uh to to cool off cool your jets uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> as as the Thais would say, Jai Yin. I did a quick video on that some months ago. Mm -hmm. Jai Yin, cool your heart. 
Mm. Let your yeah. heart cool down. Yeah. You know, don't yeah. don't be tossed back and forth with emotion. You know, yes. emotions come up, but emotions are not the issue. Emotions are the lid on top of the issue contained in, you know, that energy mass of emotion. But but we, you know, okay, acknowledge them, learn from them, and then let them pass. But um yeah, cool your jets or jai yin. <laughs> let your heart cool off. Yeah. 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 It's it's a timeout period. Yeah. Yeah, practice the pause, uh, as yeah. my Jeff would say. Practice the pause. Don't don't react instantly, but rather time out, check yourself, cool your jets, jai yin. Yeah. And gently respond with some yeah. some basis in connection and centeredness and awareness, of course. Yeah. 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 If only and everyone so did that every time, we'd be a lot better off. But yeah. this is a reminder. Yeah. <laughs> and and oftentimes, you know, there is um, guilt and shame that is behind that. And once we can come to that place of while during during the peeling of the layers of the onion during that phase it, it it can be uncomfortable so there can be that 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 blame and that and 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 the shaming and the guilt and all of that so that's just part of the peeling of the layers of the onion mm-hmm. and and then after the cooling down period then then we come to mihi, which is forgiveness. And this is when people are allowed to come forward and, and, and give confession, make confessions, um, to ask, to, to, to speak, you know, to give repentance for, for their acts and for asking for forgiveness and giving forgiveness so it's the giving and the receiving of forgiveness because sometimes um when when we um hold on to the grudges uh then then we cannot give or receive there everything is blocked and there is uh the and, and and again, when there is that that um, holding holding the grudge, again the, the silence to retreat into silence. So this can go back and forth through through the the various steps, mm-hmm. and 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 back again, you mm-hmm. know, until you can arrive at mihi at at forgiveness. Um, and then there is uh, the next step, which is kala. Which is to to re- to release, to to untie, to uh, to to let go, and to free each other from that yeah. entanglement and yeah. color. When yeah, you say, and we say that often. We in, you know in just daily um, talk. You know when you're passing by someone, you say, "Oh, a my, You know, a part of me. You know, a my you know, I'm part of me. I'm, and we use that a lot. And so, uh, in color, it means that I unbind you from the wrong, thus that I too may be unbound from it as well. So, can you so, say that again to make sure that we're clear on how that that understanding, please? Yes, yes. I unbind you from the wrong. And thus, may I also be unbound. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to go down a tangent on that, but that is um, what I would call super conscious. Hmm. Super conscious, because uh, it's understanding and owning and accepting your own Hmm. part in the entanglement, rather Hmm. than just you did something wrong to me it, it's it's understanding that it was a it's a two-way entanglement um and we each, we all we all take turns stepping on toes you know so it's good you know it's good to to own that sometimes we trespass 
and we have to back up and I'm sorry, forgive me for that. Right. And and the other thing, Kahu, if I could uh, make a point, um, you said mihi, the forgiveness, mihi. Um, my understanding uh, from Kahu Wendell is that mm. the Hawaiian concept of mihi, forgiveness, is not that I pardon you for your wrong action, which is what English kind of kind of makes you tend to think that that's what that means. It's implied in the English concept of I forgive you. What, it, what we think of is I pardon your error against me. But that's not really what it means, is it? Correct. It it means I will I it it's so different. Language does you know if if we are used to using the English language for to 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 express this in Hawaiian it's different. Sure. So um mihi is uh the forgiveness uh it's it's not holding it's it's really freeing yourself because you're not holding on to you're not res reserving any of the situation your your part in it and my part in it and it's really releasing each other so when i for ask for forgiveness i'm asking that I be that that I am now being released so that we no longer have this entanglement and it's a spiritual it's an energetic release absolutely and beautiful and I don't know why I had this funny thought <laughs> uh do you remember that that ancient commercial uh you got your chocolate in my peanut butter. You got your peanut butter in my yeah. chocolate. <laughs> you have to be a certain age and from the United States to know that commercial. Right. But yeah, yes, both and. It's uh -huh. it is it is a a a a pair, a deuce. It does involve the two. There is no one-sided only and the other side only. Uh and I I just wanted to accentuate that because I've mentioned it in other videos too where you can essentially think of it as I release myself from the woundedness and victimhood of this entanglement. And but I'm very glad that I asked you to clarify it more because of how you also include releasing the other. And mm -hmm. if, if you want to skyrocket into the stratosphere of spirituality, uh, there is no other anymore at that level in the first place. So it's yeah. it, it's operating down here from a code that's infinitely higher than how things kind of tend to work down here. So it, right. yeah, it's Perfect. a super consciousness. Perfect. You know, one of my friends um, who's from India, she says, but isn't, you know, with karma, we, mm -hmm. all, we all have, have karma. And she says, but isn't, how can you release someone else because they still have their karma mm. and and i say yes however with we're all connected and through the divine orchestration of the unfolding of events that my releasing someone through forgiveness is the act necessary to that also assists that person in their awareness and in their consciousness to go through the the process of forgiveness on 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 that person's uh fr from from their perspective because and and I and in doing Ho'oponopono, I don't need to be face to face with someone to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. I in this um in this day and age, um I can just say it and energetically, you know, the yeah. words carry mana 
yeah. and power and energy that carries and is the act which does the releasing and the disentanglement. Yeah, Kahu, that, that's what I call sending the intention. Mm -hmm. And this is not something that you, I don't want to misuse the word imagined because it's so often misused as if imagined means unreal, but that's not true. But it's not something that you just imagined in your own little mind and, and that's the only place it existed, you know, like solipsism and all that. No, when you are entering the realm of the imagination. This is the womb in which your realities are selected, chosen, and given a push into manifestation. They're sent into creation uh, in that sense as we are co-creators. And when you have this process occur within your mind's eye, your imagination, it is real. It is happening. It does matter. It's genuine and you're sending it out energetically um, into all of creation, specifically to the GPS coordinates of the person you are envisioning, whose face you see, whose name you are thinking of. That is their GPS pinpoint in the spirit realm. And, uh, you know, it matters. You, you are sending energy out. And as you mentioned before, with the butterfly wings, whatever frequency you're vibing is affecting everyone within a certain reach around you. And fortunately, the very low frequencies, I believe the lowest of which is shame, um, the, these thankfully don't reach as far, but they still affect those that are within the reach. But as you go all the way up into peace, love, and I, I think joy is actually the highest, that has an incredibly higher reach thinking, thinking like if you yell from the pit of the valley, some people will hear you. If you yell from the top of the mountain, everyone will hear you, you know, more, it's something to that effect. So what you're talking about uh, is actually reality. You, you are making that energetic transaction with the person you are intending you know, and yes. you, you made me think of what my friend Rick said, you talked about, you know, the karma aspect. So I'm, I'm going to credit my, my, my brother Rick here, he said, forgiveness transmutes karma. And I think right. that's the simplest way we could label what you just described. Forgiveness right. transmutes karma. Yep. I love that. Three simple words. <laughs> yeah. Well, simplest is always the, the pinpoint of wisdom. Wisdom yes. is not lots of words and complicated. It's boom. Yeah. You know, as I say, yeah, simply profound well and profoundly simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now, Kahu. So, so, so yeah. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Is there more to the process itself? More, more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so then after the um the unbinding after the unbinding i unbind you and thus may i also be unbound so now we are untying this knot between us and releasing this energetic entanglement freeing one another now we we cut we oki we cut so we ask to uh, to sever, to cut, and to separate um, the to, to cut ourselves of the cords of connection. And once we do this, we we cut and we release, and then we are releasing each other from the physical, the mental, the emotional the the mm. painful the painful memories mm. the the disharmony the imbalance mm -hmm. and we are we are releasing one another in that so we're cutting cutting the cords and we can do this for ourselves so it's the oki kahu i have to ask i have to ask excuse me 
when you say cutting the cords of connection, would it would it be maybe a better way to say cutting cutting the cords of entanglement that they had that mm -hmm. you had? Because of course yeah. you, you don't want to ever be disconnected, but but what you mean is a un you know cut that that we, like a fishing we, line. We're we're net. only cutting we're only cutting the disharmony, the imbalance, right. okay. and the unwanted memories. We're not cutting the golden threads, loving of right. loving towards connections because yeah. those those stay intact yeah well we're just cutting the pilikia the the um the disharmony yeah okay. but thank you for asking that yes absolutely just, just to be just to be crystal clear just to be clear yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not you're not disowning the person as a process at all <laughs> you're just you're just you're cutting you're in the, the family yeah you're in the fa yeah. this family together and and you're not saying okay you know you yeah. go on your way and i'm gonna go on, on my way now yeah. and so yeah. long no yeah. yeah yeah um there may be that situation with other people you know who mm -hmm. um have challenges in this life uh having come into this life having having made a contract with someone and 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 the contract uh is is one of negativity and you want to be done with that yeah. relationship once and for all then yes you can also uh, use use the oki to cut and sever that relationship okay. if necessary so there is that yeah okay okay um so then then the next step would be the the pule ho'opau or the closing prayer um to uh, summarize uh, the the resolve the resolution and 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 what has been this discovered and uh, after that has been after the, the there's the pule ho'opau the closing prayer uh, then it goes into the um, uh, the closing rituals, and the closing rituals is often where uh, um, you give give food or offerings to your your family god. Uh, and in the Hawaiian culture, we have many gods, and we have our almakua, our guardian spirits. I have my almakua. My guardian spirits are. Are the the owl, the puyo, and the mano, the shark, and so um, we would give um, offerings to say mahalo for for being with us and for helping us to resolve this 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 situation, the uh, resolve our indif our differences, and then and then you would cleanse, you would go and cleanse, and you would go into the ocean and cleanse in and cleanse in the waters, cleanse in the in the ocean waters, um, early morning ocean waters. And then and then after that would be the um the na the 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 the, the hana the hana imua which which means um now what are you gonna do? You now you're gonna you're gonna um take on some uh, some future tasks that some some new goals and some new um and you're going to prepare yourself for uh processes to uh, like 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 say okay well after this after we've healed this situation we're now going to say that whenever there's a disagreement we're going to talk about it we're going to bring so it doesn't get to this to be this big of an issue we're going to um do this we're going to make sure that we're always we speak clearly we're going to make sure that our conversation is clear that we understand one another we're going to um want to resolve uh these situations before it it becomes a you know a, a big issue so so these are all the things that these are all the steps that w that involve the the traditional oponopono. And as you can see, it can take a lot of time and a lot of focus and a lot of intention to arrive to a place of healing for, for the loved ones. And if there is someone in the family who's ill, then there's also a kahuna laau lapa'au, a plant medicine um, 
um, expert who comes and also does Ho'oponopono over the individual and, and brings in the plant medicine. And, and so even involving plant medicine, you're now talking to the plants and you're, you're praying to the plants and you're letting the plants know before you pick the plant. You're talking to the plant and letting the plant know that what you're going to do. And, and you, you need help with this situation. This person is ill. And I'm, I'm asking if I may um, gather the, 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 the plant medicine for this particular situation to help this person who, who wants to, to come with me. And then you wait until the plant, you know, shakes its leaves or, and then, and then that's when you say, oh, mahalo. And then that's when you gather the, and, and you don't take everything. You just take what you need. You just take what you need and you, and you make your, your medicine with that. And th so everything is done intentionally by asking and talking and speaking it out loud to source, to keakua, to naomakua, the guardian spirits, and asking for the guidance and asking for the healing and asking for the, for, for, for the, um, for the lifting of, of the um of the mai, the illness the sickness yeah so i think this is yeah go, go ahead i'm sorry no i, I was just going to say this is this is it in a nutshell <laughs> yeah and, and it's so very deep and it's so very intentional it's just every word spoken is spoken intentionally and everyone is is um, being very uh, mindful. That's the the best word I can think of right now as, as to their part in the situation. What I think is very very meaningful and um, recognizable with me is how you mentioned that you talk to the plants and you ask them if you can have some of their body mm -hmm. for the medicine and, and you let them know what your intention behind it is. Now, to the modern human who is utterly disconnected on every level with everything, and is concerned only with get, 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 get. That's going to seem silly. Mm -hmm. And yet it betrays, reveals to those of us in our stages of awakening a very profound wisdom and understanding that all life is alive and all life is intelligent and all life is sacred, you know, like, like a Shinto uh, approach, you know, e even the stones, I, I shouldn't even have to say even the stones, you know, but from the stones to the flowers, to the trees. And of course the, the animals that move, they're easier to understand, but even the things that don't move like we do or don't live like we do, See, we relate best to what's most like how we are, but that doesn't mean that that's the full scope and spectrum of life's expression, of life lifing. And so uh, I, I will share with you that, um, and I'm not alone, uh, of course, I not only have conversations with my cats, you know, and they understand and they, they, they affirm back to me their understanding and should I say their empathy. They affirm it back conclusively, but I also uh, oftentimes will speak to plants. You know, I'm, I, I, I have gardening out here. I grow Malabar spinach, which by the way, I recommend for everyone in a warm climate, Malabar spinach. Um, I have papayas everywhere that I, I've got, I've, I, I even have um, uh, of a, of, of a puhi that I put out here in front of my house, right next to the porch, a big, 
you know, forest of, 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 of a puhi that I can smell in the evenings when it's blooming, it's wonderful. And yeah, I, I talk with the plants and what, what I mean is I connect with their consciousness and my consciousness. And sometimes I can feel that I wasn't the one that initiated it, but I was the one that was summoned. And that takes a certain degree of subtleness and calm and peace. And of course, again, connectivity. And so if we can cultivate that, then we're going to be super aware and connected with people around us who are the same species and, and speak some of the same languages and, and understand the body language and all that. So, but I, I just love that you, that you emphasized the acknowledgement and gratitude and requesting permission, J just like the ancient Hawaiians would ask permission from the spirits of a certain place before entering it. You know, I, to me, that's beautiful. And, and it's something we all need to get back in touch with. So I thank you for sharing. I, I agree. I agree. And, and, and I'd like to finish with one thing because I think it is so important. Thank you for bringing that up because it's also uh, very important to me that no matter who we are and no matter where we go, that we always ask permission. Even I myself, as a local person here, born and raised here in Hawaii, uh, half Hawaiian, when I travel outer island, I don't live outer island. I live here on Oahu. So I am considered a malihini to an, uh, on an outer island. I'm considered a visitor. Mm -hmm. So whenever I go anywhere, and even here on Oahu, I ask permission to go here, to go there, to do this, to do that. I ask permission to, of my plants, my flowers, my beautiful flowers. May I pick you? May I, I wear you in my behind my ear? I would so appreciate your your fragrance and your your beauty and you your mana that will carry me through the day. And I let them know what it is. But and so this in particular, uh, especially for visitors coming here to Hawaii, and they don't know the protocol here and understandably so, uh, but they're curious and they want to travel to all of these places and very sacred places that they're, un they're unaware that it's a sacred place. Uh, but the, but in, in order for there to be safety, in order for, for you to have a safe passage in a place and return home safely, it's always a wonderful practice, wonderful practice before you deboard the plane to say, to ask, may I have permission to enter into this sacred aina, this sacred land, this sacred space. I, I, I do not come to harm. I bring my, my aloha. I, I, I come with peace. And I will not disturb anything. I will not take anything unless it is offered to me as a, as a makana, a gift. But I come with respect and with reverence. And I ask to be guided on my journey with so much gratitude and aloha. And then pause for at least 30 seconds and wait for the answer. And even if you're sitting on a plane and you're saying this, just pause for 30 seconds and then say, mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With And, and, and take that moment because that is your travel insurance right there. No matter where you go, you don't need to buy the additional car insurance because you are... That, that is more that's that's reality right there that is truth absolutely the man made the man made version is well that is also you know uh your insurance but this is your guaranteed insurance that you will not be harmed yeah one one is assurance and one is guarantee <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I could share so many I, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief about it but uh, 
many, many incidences um, that I could relate, I could relay to you about how protected I am. Uh, so many, and I know that the same for you. If if you walk a path of light and your intention is pure and you are humble and consistent and forgiving and understanding and connected and attuned and harmonized, a lot of words there, but it, the more you can be consistently in that state of existence, that state of being, you are, you could say in a, in a perpetual state of grace. And when you enter a new place, there are localities, there are local spirits, there are. And, and uh, to be respectful and acknowledging, uh, I bet is going to be very surprising to a lot of them in the first place, because humanity has drifted so far away from all of that. Um, but it isn't, it, it's been forgotten by most, but it is not lost. And what I will say regarding, I, I lived in Hawaii for six and a half years. Incredible place. I learned so much. Some of it, some of it was learned by realizing my ignorance. Some of it was learned by discovering that I thought a certain way that I had never been conscious of before. And, and some of it was, ah, uh, I have recaptured this that I had almost lost. But yeah, it was deep down in me. And this helped to bring it back up to the surface. And I'm very grateful for that. And the day that I met our wonderful mutual friend, Bob Belcher, who's on, on this channel a lot, um, was one of those days where, you know, there was the, the in Kulio'o, the, the, the uh, Ko'olau Mountains. And I said, I'm going to climb that mountain. I've got to get up there and see the view. And I went up there and ended up on a wild pig trail that I thought was for the better hikers because I didn't understand what that was. And I ended up getting further and further trapped up the, the cliffs. And I'll tell you what, you talk about a religious experience. When you're climbing vertically on cliffs and the little seedlings that you're trying to hold on to are coming out of the cliff, you, you get religious quick. And I said, to the spirits of this mountain, forgive me for my foolishness. I didn't understand that I was going deeper and deeper up a wild pig trail. I'm now in great trouble. I plead for your help. Of course, you know, I, I also believe in the supreme, you know, Keakua, but I, I, I started with local. You spirits here in this mountain, I know you're here. I don't know who you are, but I know you're here. I feel you and I need your help. First, forgive me for not understanding the trail I got up and, you know, metaphor there. <laughs> And second, please help me. And within, oh, I'll just say 20 more minutes, I reached the very top point of the cliff, peered up over the edge. Like I, you know, I got back onto the solid ground and here comes Bob with a beard and a staff walking towards me. And I said, did I, did I die and go to heaven? Are you Jesus? <laughs> what, you know, but it, it was wonderful to have that experience and that memory. And I'll just add that it's not only Hawaii at all. Everywhere has this kind of sacred aspect and it's, it's local spirits, uh, some of whom you can accidentally or unwittingly disturb or anger if you're not careful. And here in Thailand, that would be the Naga. Naga. They are, you could say, a reptilian or snake-like entity a spiritual entity from the underworld some of them are good some of them are bad some of them are helpful some of them are mischievous but you don't want to get on the wrong side of any of them and uh living here in thailand for as long as i've lived in hawaii now i can just tell you that i've had experiences that affirm the authenticity of that as well so i think that wrapping it back up into Ho'oponopono, the acknowledgement of the spiritual and the sacred aspect of all life, especially the loved ones who are around you now. And I'll close on my part with the what Hale Makua said, 
Love all you see, including yourself. Kahu, why don't you wrap it up with uh, some aloha, conclusive, conclusive, conclusory aloha from, from your side. And I want to thank you on behalf of all of our viewers for sharing uh, the authentic, the authentic ho'opono, kahana maoli, kahana pono, o ho'opono pono. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. It is very meaningful. It is sacred. It is priceless. If it is absorbed and practiced. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, I, I'd love to end with an oli, if I may. Absolutely. And this uh, particular oli is to um, ask that uh, we be granted strength. Ask that we be granted the hidden knowledge, the hidden wisdom, the, 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 the secrets of, of the meaning of, of the oli, of the stories, of the mo'olelo, of, of, of the things that we've shared, if we can be granted the hidden meanings and receive those, those messages. So this is uh, oli ehomai. E ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e o na me auna no e au na mele e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e O na me auna no e auna mele e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai e ho mai ka ike mai luna mai e o na me auna no e auna mele e ho mai. E ho mai, e ho mai. E. Mahalo uh, nulo kakao kahu. Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. You got me smiling because, <laughs> as you said, I want to do this only. I immediately knew which one it was, and. I have on a note card over here written for my next episode, teach the ehomai oli. And I guess now we've just covered it. I might <laughs> do a quick episode for those that want to learn how to do it. And I'll use your clip in that uh, for those that might, yeah, might want to just learn that chant. It's a beautiful chant, oli. Um, when I do that one, that's that's the only one I can really remember by heart from when I lived there. I can remember going out to to um, well, this this was when I was living on on Maui. I went out to the cliffs on the north side of the island, and you have the ironwood trees, the she oaks, and everything. And I remember just sending that out to the sea as as I was practicing. I would send it out that way. I didn't really want to direct it towards any people when I was learning it, and uh, it's it's very dear to me. And I consider it to be an opening prayer, an opening chant. I, I, I open with that. If I enter a sacred place and I acknowledge the spirits that I sense are there, or sometimes I don't sense, but I know that they are there. And for me, it's an introduction and, and, a, and a humble request. Reveal, reveal the hidden wisdom to me, whatever it is that I need to know or that is appropriate for me to be shown, whatever I may be granted to know, let it be so, you know, and it's a beautiful chant. So if you don't mind, I'll include your clip 
in that upcoming brief Perfect. episode. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Kahu, thank you so much. Kahu lahe. Kalu so lahela much. is coming from Oahu um, uh, in, in Hawaii, ne, which I miss very much. And uh, I just can't thank you enough. But, but what you have shared today is meaningful, precious, sacred, important, and very useful. So mahalo nui loa kakou. Thank you so much, Kahu. Eola Pono, live intentionally. <laughs>